Hey guys, not long ago I posted a video showing you how to morph between objects in a lathe nerve. And what many of you asked was, is it now possible to then morph into a third object or even a fourth? In this quick tip, I'll show you how to not only do just that, but to use this technique to morph any number of times. Camellia, Why? If you haven't seen the original video, I'll pop a link down below in the description. I encourage you to go have a look at that first and you can see this whole setup from scratch. All right, let's jump in and see how it all comes together. Hey guys, let's jump straight into this one. So you can see here, I've got a heap of splines ready to go. Now in the original video, I showed you how to morph between a can to a bottle. So I've got a few extra splines set up here to attack the question of how do we morph into more than just the two objects? So I've already set up a few extra bottles here for us to morph into. So like in the original video, we're gonna use the lathe nerb to create the geometry that we're gonna morph. So by dropping these bottle splines into that lathe nerb, you can see it completes that geometry and gives us a nice shape. And this is what we're gonna start working with. I'll move through these first few steps pretty quickly, so go and check out the original video to see this whole setup from scratch. Okay, the first thing we're gonna need to start setting this up is of course the matrix object. So let's drop that into our scene, change our mode to object, drop our first spline into the object field, turn loop off and change our distribution to even, and then we'll increase our count. I think about 200 for now should be good. I'm gonna group all my splines and just hide them so we can't see them in our viewport. Then with our matrix selected, I'll drop a tracer into our scene, double check that our matrix has gone into our trace link property. Then I'll drop our tracer beneath that matrix in our hierarchy, and then just change our tracing mode to connect all objects. You can see here now when I turn that matrix off, we've got that original spline again. What I'd like to do is compare it to our original spline, just to see if we need a few extra points. So I'll increase my point count, but I'll also just change how our tracer is interpreting our spline. And I think a B spline should work quite nicely for us. Okay, so we've got our first matrix set up. Let's rename this matrix A and drop our tracer into our lathe nerb. And great, now we can see some geometry. Now we're gonna need two matrix objects exactly the same. So let's duplicate our matrix A and rename it matrix B. And then all we need to do is replace that bottle A with bottle B in our object field. Let's just change our trace link to matrix B to have a look at that. And great, there's our second bottle. Perfect, now it's time to set up the initial morph. And we're gonna do this by using the inheritance effector. So with matrix A selected, let's drop an inheritance into our scene. Then in the inheritance object field, let's put matrix B, toggle, morph, motion, object. And now you can see when I play with the strength, we get this great morphing between the two bottles in matrix A and matrix B. Now, like in the original video, we're gonna control our animation using the fall off and just some simple keyframes. So let's add a linear fall off and just change our orientation to plus Y. And now when I move this along the Y axis in our viewport, we get this morphing from top down and bottom up between our two bottles. So with our inheritance selected, I'll drag that fall off beneath our bottle and add a keyframe frame zero. So we're seeing our initial bottle. I'll then come forward 30 frames, pull our fall off in the inheritance completely up so we can see that second bottle and add another keyframe. And great, now we've got this morphing between the two bottles. What I'm gonna do is come forward 20 frames and add another keyframe, just to give this bottle a few extra frames in our final scene. I'll then come forward 30 frames, pull our fall off beneath our bottle, add another keyframe, and now we're back to that initial state. And great, this is where we left the tutorial last time, guys. We've got this morphing between the two bottles, but now comes the fun part of how we can incorporate other morphs. Now when we morph back, we're morphing back into matrix A. 
So what I'm going to do is come to frame 49 and keyframe our object field. And this is where we're feeding that bottle A. Then by just moving forward one frame, I'm going to replace this bottle A spline with the bottle C spline and add a keyframe. And now you can see we morph from that first bottle to that second bottle and then into the third bottle. Now the reason we're able to add this extra morph is because between frame 30 and 50, we're actually seeing the object of matrix B. So we can easily swap out our spline in matrix A with nothing affected in the viewport. So this is great. We've morphed from one object to the second back into this third object. I'll come forward 10 frames again, add another keyframe, move forward 30 frames, and then it's time to pull our inheritance fall off back up above our bottle. Let's add another keyframe. And now this time we need to swap out the spline in matrix B. So let's go back to frame 89, keyframe that bottle B, swap it out this time for can D, add another keyframe, and now let's have a look at this. We've got the first bottle, the second, the third, and now we're swapping into this can. So you can see how simple this is to just think about your scene a little bit at the start, set up these splines, and now we can seamlessly morph between these in our scene. So let's continue this step again, move forward to frame 130, add a keyframe, move forward 30 frames, pull our fall off beneath the bottle. Go back to frame 29, and this time we need to swap out matrix A again. So let's add a keyframe on bottle C, swap it out for bottle E on frame 130, and add another keyframe. And just like that, we've added another morph into our scene. Let's add a keyframe, 10 frames forward of our last one. All right, let's add a few extra frames to our scene here. Go forward 30 frames, pull our fall off back up again. And of course, we've got to swap out matrix B this time. You just got to be careful you're swapping out the right spline on the correct matrix. So by having all your splines in your matrix labeled clearly, it just makes this whole process far easier. Great, we're almost there. Of course, we need to close off this loop and get back to our initial spline. So let's finally pull our fall off back beneath the bottle, go back to frame 209, jump into matrix A, keyframe it, forward a frame, and now we can replace it with our initial spline and we've just closed this loop. So let's have a quick look at this. More from that first to the second, the can in the middle, an extra couple of bottles at the end, and then finally back to our initial state. This is looking so good. And how quick was that? Just to morph between these objects just with a few simple keyframes. So I'm glad you guys asked and I hope this helps with how you can incorporate extra morphs into your scene and completely change your object. This could be a great technique. Perhaps you're, if you're working for a beer company and you're morphing between their labels and the different beer shapes and you can really have a lot of fun with this. Of course, we're not gonna leave our animation there. Let's, let's add a bit of fluid motion to our final scene here. So with matrix A selected, I'll toggle over to my Effectors tab and add a Delay Effector. Let's add a bit of Spring, increase our Strength to about 75, and let's have another look at this. Nice, we've got this little bit of extra jiggle, we've got this nice fluid animation, and I think we'll end this one there, guys. This is just a quick tip on how to add those extra morphs into your scene by using this technique. All right, I hope this helps, guys. If you've got any other questions, make sure you let me know below, and I'll see you guys again real soon. Cheers.